Welcome back everyone. Today we are here with this. What is this? It is fumed silica. Fumed silica is a substance which is incredibly light. As you can see here, I can lift this bucket up with only one hand and it is filled up to this mark with fumed silica. It has a very low density and whatever's in there, it should weigh about 100 to 200 grams if my estimations are correct. It could be even less, but it feels like 100 to 200 grams. Fumed silica is a very interesting substance. Fumed silica is a very interesting substance. Credit is given where credit is due. I didn't come up with the following experiment myself. And I saw it on the action lab, if I remember correctly. So make sure to check out his video. But we got fumed silica. We also got another chemical called distilled water. Why not normal water? Well, distilled water is purer. It might also work with normal water, but I prefer to use the distilled version. We also need a mixer or blender, whatever you want to call it. So let's get right into this, because this is going to be interesting. Before we begin with this, we have to ask ourselves a few questions. Is this safe to handle? Absolutely not. It is only very fine sand, because it's fumed silica, and therefore it should be safe. No, it actually isn't. It easily becomes airborne, and those very fine particles could enter your lungs, leading to something called silicosis. You can read it up yourself on the internet, because I'm not going to explain it. When by inhaling any of these particles, I'm going to be putting on this gas mask, equipped with a P3 rated filter. A P3 rated filter is basically a particle filter, which is suited for very fine particles. By wearing this mask, we will be able to avoid inhaling any of these particles, and we're also going to be putting on these gloves, because I don't want the stuff on my hands, because it's going to be spread everywhere if I don't wear gloves, and I don't want that. So let's put on the gas mask, open up this big bucket, and first take a look at what fumed silica actually looks like. I've actually never used this particle filter before because I mainly deal with toxic gases and not with toxic particles. After opening the bucket, a nice and white powder revealed itself. It actually looked a little like aerogel on the sides of the bucket, but this isn't really visible on the video footage. I shined a laser at the silicon dioxide because I wanted to see how much light actually gets through it and as it turns out a lot of light goes through. In order to begin with the actual experiments we need to add the fumed silica to a blender. I used a piece of paper to do this and you can't see it on the video footage but a lot of white and very fine silica dust actually become airborne and floated away. For the first tray I added way too much distilled water, but it still gave interesting results. The fumed silica was blended together with the water and afterwards we were left with this gel-like substance. To try to turn it into dry water, additional fumed silica was added, but I guess I added way too much water in the beginning and we ended up with this. After mixing it we were left with this jelly-like cube. I guess I actually overshot and added way too much water, but it still looks interesting. It's like jelly, but it doesn't wet anything. The blender was cleaned and it's time for a fresh attempt. This time the distilled water is going to be added gradually. We started off by adding about 2 milliliters of distilled water. The blender was then closed shut and as you're going to see in a few seconds, I had a problem with the blender closing. I might replace the safety switch with a normal switch someday. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. I collected as much of the fumed silica as possible and afterwards decontaminated the entire room before proceeding. In the end we were left with this product which behaved more like water than the initial fumed silica. After making it however I decided to add even more water which completely destroyed the nice effect. To 
to turn it back into some nice product, I added Smorphium Silica and in the end we were left with this. In slow motion you can see that it actually behaves more like water than like some solid, but while shaking it without slow motion, you won't be able to see this. In the end we were left with two bags full of some stuff. In the first one, the one where we used so much water for, we got this gel like clear substance. In the second bag we got this somewhat water like substance. Actually there's much more to fumed silica than I just demonstrated. There's hydrophobic fumed silica, hydrophilic fumed silica, I guess we used uh, hydrophilic form before and now we are going to demonstrate the difference between those two. On the right side you can see some hydrophilic fume silica and on the left side hydrophobic fume silica. Hydrophilic means that it should actually suck up the water while hydrophobic means that it should repel the water. So let's give it a try. This is some distilled water and we are going to add it to this fume silica. As you can see it's immediately being sucked up. Actually consumes a lot of the water. Ah, I didn't want to make dust, but I guess I can't be avoided. Now to the hydrophobic fumed silica. Ah, it actually looks like it sucks up the water even more, but it just looks like it. When you look closer you can see that the water stays below the surface. And if I add even more water, it should actually become visible, yeah. You can see it. The fumed silica is floating on the surface and the water is just below there. It still looks dry. This form looks a little wet after adding the water. And this is because it is hydrophilic, it sucks up the water. Now let me quickly add some more water to it. And you can see that all of it becomes wet. Literally all of it. More water to the hydrophobic one. And even if we swirl it around, it looks like it stays dry. Let me give it a stroke of the pipette. The hydrophobic one definitely stays dry. What happens if we combine the two? Well, the hydrophobic stuff just stays on top. It's really interesting material. Just fascinating to look at. I would like to know what it is like when I use the hydrophobic stuff for making what's called dry water and I might actually give it a try but not in today's video. If you like today's video make sure to drop me a like and if you don't want to miss out on actual chemistry stuff in the future make sure to subscribe. I also have to thank my Patreons because you guys make it possible to film even more expensive stuff, not just even more expensive, but even more cooler stuff which you might enjoy. So I wish all of you a nice day, until next time.